too close to anywhere useful. Why on earth did I set out to cross the largest desert in the world in this contraption? <laughs> well, a man needs to do something with his life. And I've always believed things work out best if we pursue something we love. Up until the age of six, I planned to be an artist. I'd read in a book that a boa constrictor swallows its prey whole, then rests for six months while its meal is slowly digested. This excited me, so I created my first artwork, a boa constrictor which had just swallowed an elephant. Like this. I showed it to the grown-ups. I asked them if they thought it looked scary. Why would we find our hat scary? <laughs> to make things a bit clearer, I created a second artwork. This time I drew it like an x-ray. You can see the elephant inside the bowl detector. <laughs> but the grown-ups weren't interested. They ignored my second artwork and told me I needed to put my energy into schoolwork, mathematics, history, geography, and grammar. Nice. I was disappointed. It's difficult when you have to explain everything you do to every grown-up you meet. So I abandoned my artistic aspirations. From something else I found interesting. Flying. And to be sure, the geography I left at school has come in handy. I can tell at a glance if I'm flying over China or Arizona, which comes in handy if you're lost flying at night. Over the years, I've met many serious grown-ups and I've studied them. And it hasn't much improved my opinion of them. Whenever I see someone who looks as though he might see things a bit more clearly, I've shown him my artwork number one. But always he or she will say, well that's just a hat. And so, I don't talk to him about bowl constrictors, untamed forests or stars. I meet him where he's at. We talk about bridge, golf, politics and neckties. And always my grown-up has been extremely happy to have met someone so sensible. <laughs> well, here I am, in the middle of the desert, with maybe enough water to last for a week while I fix my engine. Life and death. But a bit of sleep first, I think. <laughs> Too old. I want to shoot the can live for a long time. Fine. 
is his box. The sheet you want is inside. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Do you think the sheet will need a lot of grass? Why? Because where I live, there's not much space. That's well, okay, I've drawn you a very small sheet. Not so small. Look, he's gone to sleep. What's that thing? That is not a thing. It flies. It's a plane. It's my plane. What? You fell out of the sky? Yes. Wow. That's funny. So you fell out of the sky too. Which planet do you come from? Have you come from another planet? You couldn't have come very far on that. <laughs> well, where have you come from? And where do you plan on taking my sheep? It's good about the box you've given him. But he can sleep in it at night. It can be his house. Well, that's true. And if you're good, I'll give you a rope too. And a stake to tie him up with during the day. Tie him up? What a strange idea. Well, if you don't, he'll wander off and get lost. But where do you think he'd go? I don't know. Anywhere. Straight ahead of him. Doesn't matter. Where I live, everything's very small. Straight ahead of him won't take him very long.
listen to her. You should never listen to flowers. You should only enjoy looking at them, breathing in their fragrance. Mine perfumed my whole planet and lit up my life. I never should have run away, but I did know how to appreciate her. The stories of times and their cause uncertainly. I should have judged her by her acts, not her words. But I was too young to know how to love her. So, you left your planet because of her? Yes. I was helped by a migrating flock of wild birds.
There's only one rat. I don't like condemning anyone to death. I'll go now. No, I'll make you my ambassador. Grown-ups are certainly very strange.
The second, uh, it was 11 years ago, was a crisis of rheumatism. I hadn't had any exercise. I'm a serious man, I don't have time to waste. And the third, where was I? Who knows I was saying five million. Millions of what? Millions of those things you see in the sky sometimes. Flies? No, oh, those little shiny things. Bees? No, oh, those things that make lazy people daydream. But me, I'm a serious person. I don't have time for daydreams. Oh, you mean the stars? Yes, yes, stars. And what are you doing with 500 million stars? 500,622,731. I value precision. And what are you doing with these stars? What am I doing with them? Yes! Nothing. I own them. You own the stars? <laughs> Yes. But I thought you had a king. Kings don't possess. They reign over. It's very different. <laughs> What's the point of owning the stars? <coughs> Makes me rich. And what's the point of being rich? To be able to uh, buy other stars more of uh, uh, This man reasons up my drunkard. How can you own the stars? Whose are they? I don't know, they don't belong to anyone. Then they're mine. Because <laughs> I thought of it first. <laughs> Is that what it takes? Absolutely. When you find a diamond that doesn't belong to anyone, it's yours. When you find an island that doesn't belong to anyone, it's yours. If you're the first person to have an idea, you patent it, and it's yours. So I own the stars, because no one before has ever thought of owning them. That's true. And what do you do with them? I manage them. I count them. I recount them. It's difficult. But I love hard work. If I'm a scoff, you can put it around my neck and take it away. If I'm a fly, you can take it away. But you can't pick the stars. No, but I can put them in the bank. What do you mean? I write the number of stars on a piece of paper. Then, lock that piece of paper in a drawer. This is amusing, maybe poetic, but it's not very serious. Mm -hmm. If I own, a, I own a flower which I water every day, Three volcanoes which I clean out every week. It's useful to my flower work, my volcanoes I own. But you're of no use to the stars. Grown ups are absolutely weird. lamp out in the morning and light it in the evening. I had the rest of the day to relax and the night to sleep in. And since that time the orders have changed? Orders haven't changed, that's the trouble. Year by year the planet has been revolving faster and faster and still the orders haven't changed. So? So now it revolves every minute and I have no time for rest. I light and extinguish every minute. Ha! That's funny. Here a day we lost a minute. It's not funny at all. A month has gone by since we started talking. A month? Yes, 30 minutes, 30 days. Good evening. You know, I can tell you a way to rest if you want to. I always want to rest. 
Your planet is so small that you can go right around it in three big strides. To always be in the sunshine, you will walk, and you can make the day last as long as you like. That won't do me much good. What I love best is sleeping. Bad luck. Yes, bad luck. Good day. He would have been scorned by all the others, but he's the only one I don't find ridiculous. Perhaps it's because he's thinking about something other than himself. He's the only one I could make my friends, but his planet is too small for two. Drunkards and 311 million vain people. 
That's a lot of grown-ups. So you can understand the little prince's surprise when he arrived on Earth and saw no one.
Hello. Hello, who are you? You're very pretty. I'm a fox. Come play with me. I can't play with you. I'm not tamed. What does <coughs> tamed mean? You're not from around here. What are you looking for? I'm looking for people. What does tamed mean? People have guns and they chase you. That's annoying. <laughs> but also, they raise chickens. That's the only interesting thing they do. Are you looking for chickens? No, I'm looking for people. What does tamed mean? It means to create dependence. Create dependence? Yes. At the moment, for me, you're just a little boy, like a million other little boys. I don't need you, and you don't need me. For you, I'm just a fox, like a million other foxes. But if you tamed me, we would need each other. You would become for me unique in the world, and I would become for you unique in the world. I, I'm beginning to understand. There is a flower. I think she has tamed me. That's possible. All sorts of things happen on Earth. Oh, this isn't on Earth. On another planet? Yes. Are there hunters on that planet? No. And how about chickens? No. Nothing's perfect. Well, it's like this. My life is monotonous. I hunt chickens, men hunt me, all the chickens are alike, and all the men are alike. So, I'm a bit bored. But, if you tamed me, my life would brighten up. I would recognise your footsteps as different from all the others. Other footsteps would make me retreat into my hole. Yours would call me out, like music. Look over there at that field of wheat. I don't eat bread. Wheat for me is useless. It says nothing to me. But your hair is the colour of wheat. So if you tame me, the golden wheat will remind me of you. And I will love the sound of the wind in the wheat field. Please tame me. I would like to. But I have friends to find and many things to learn. The only things you learn are the things you tame. People don't have time to learn anymore. They buy things ready-made in shops. But you can't buy friends in shops. That is why people, many people no longer have friends. If you want a friend, tame me. What do I have to do? You have to be very patient. At first you'll sit a bit away from me in the grass. Oh, look at you out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> and you won't say anything. Words are the source of misunderstanding. But each day you can sit a little closer. And it's important that you come at the same time each day. For instance, if you come at four o'clock in the afternoon, at three o'clock, I'll begin to be happy. The closer we get to four o'clock, the happier I'll get. By four, I'll be quite anxious and excited. <laughs> I will have discovered the price of happiness. But if you came at any odd time, I would never know when to prepare my heart. Rights are necessary. What's a right? Yeah. It's another thing which has been neglected. It's what makes one day different from other days, one hour different from other hours. My hunters have a right. Every <coughs> Thursday, they dance with the village girls. So Thursday is a marvellous day for me. I can stroll as far as the vineyard. But if the hunters danced any old day, all the days would be alike. And I would never have a holiday. <laughs>
to go. I will cry. It's your fault. I don't wish you any harm, but you want me to tame you. You're right. But you're still going to cry. Yes, I am. Then you've gained nothing. I have gained. Because of the colour of the wheat. Go and have another look at those roses, and you will understand that yours is unique in all the world. You will come to say goodbye to me, and I will tell you a secret. Anything you like. I walk very gently. 
towards a water fountain. <laughs> well, that's the end of my water. I've been trying to fix my engine for eight days, and now I have no more water. I love to walk gently towards a water fountain. My friend the fox told me. My dear little man, this has nothing to do with your fox. Why not? Because we're going to die of thirst. It's good to have had a friend, even if you are going to die of thirst. I'm glad the fox was my friend. But I'm thirsty too. Let's go look for a well. Because of the anniversary. You must go back to work on your plane. Come back tomorrow evening. I'll wait here. <laughs> Exact place. We'll meet back there. 
to see my footprints in the sand. Wait for me. I'll be there tonight. Tonight. Is your poison good? I won't have to suffer long. I'll give you what you want. Now go. I want to get down. <sighs> what is that? What's going on? You're talking to snakes now? I'm glad you finally managed to fix your plane. Now you can go home. But how did you know? I was just going to tell you that. I'm going home today too. It's a lot further. It'll be much more difficult. Little man, you're frightened. I'll be much more frightened tonight. Come on, I want to hear you laugh again. Tonight will be exactly one year. My style will be directly above the place where it fell last year. It's all just a bad dream, isn't it? All this talk of, of snakes and getting back to your star. What's important is what's in, is invisible. Yes. It's like that for a flower too. If you love a flower, it's good to look up at the stars at night. All the stars will turn into flowers. Yes, of course. It's like that with water too. Remember the water you gave me? It was like music. It was good. Yes, it was. Every night, look up the sky. My star's too small for me to show you exactly where it is. That's okay. My star for you can be all the stars. And you can love here all of them, and they can all be your friends. And now I'm going to give you a present. <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing your laugh, little man. That could be my present to you, like the water. What do you mean? Stars mean different things for different people. For some people, travelers, they're guides. For others, they're just pretty little lights. For thinkers, they're problems. For my businessman, they're money. But all those stars are silent. What do you mean? When you look at the sky at night, and since I'll be on one of the stars, and since I'll be laughing, I'll be for you as if all the stars are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and when you get over your sadness, eventually you will. You will want to laugh with me. And you will always be my friend. And sometimes you will open your window for fun. Your friends will be amazed to see you laughing while looking at the stars. They'll think you're mad. They'll be as though I've given you 500,000 little bells which you know how to laugh. Tonight, you know, don't come. I'm not going to leave you. <laughs> we'll look as though I'm in pain. We'll look as though I'm dying. Just don't come see that. It's not worth the trouble. I'm not going to leave you. I'm telling you this because of the snake. Snakes can be nasty. They can bite for fun. I'm not going anywhere. They don't have enough poison for a second bite. <laughs>
for six years ago. I told my friends I was just tired. I didn't tell anyone why I was so sad. But he must have got back to his own planet. Because when I went back the next morning, his body wasn't there. Perhaps it wasn't so heavy after all. I love listening to the stars at night. Like 500 million tiny tickling bells. And I find myself wondering if his sheep has or has not eaten in rows because I forgot to draw the leather strap on the muzzle. Oh, 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 oh,